Hello, everyone. I'm Alan Preston, and this is Cooking Without Looking TV show quarantine edition. The first television show which features people who are blind, visually impaired, and low vision. Hey, Annette, do you know what time it is? Hey, Alan. Yes, I'm Annette Watkins. Hello to everyone. And yes, Alan, it's time for us to click on the Zoom link to have another fun hour of learning how to cook during quarantine cuisine. And we just wanna ask a little surprise from all of you out there watching, if you could click on the bottom left of your screen, it should be a video icon. Go ahead and click on that if you would like, so we could see all the beautiful faces that everybody will be able to see. Ah, uh, but if you don't want to, that's okay too. So, well, you know what? I hope you do because it'll make things so much more fun and the more the merrier. And speaking of fun today, I'm really excited that we have with us Takesha Salfo. She's from Riviera Beach. So she'll be cooking her Watergate, her Watergate salad. We're going to find out what that is, but I hear it's very sweet and scrumptious. And Annette, you're pulling out the air fryer to make a delicious, light and healthy zucchini spaghetti. Yes, I will be making it later. I'll tell you all about it. But also as a surprise, we have Sylvia Simpson Perez. She's been on here before. That's not the surprise, but we're gonna change things up a little and she's gonna give us some cooking tips after each segment. So we look forward to that. And so with that, let's start the next Cooking Without Looking TV show, Quarantine Cuisine, Qu uh, Quarantine Cuisine Edition, powered by Zoom. That's a mouthful, Alan, but you got it. You know, today's cooking show is very special. I'm introducing a new guest with us today. Her name is Takesha. Salfo. And as I said before, Takesha is from Riviera Beach. Doesn't that sound beautiful? I'm from Fort Lauderdale. I know the weather's great here, but tell me your feelings on today's weather, Takesha. Um, in Riviera Beach today, it is so beautiful. I went out for a moment and I stay on the East Coast. And so I feel the breeze from the ocean. And so it's another beautiful day in Riviera Beach. Okay, mm. we don't want to make everybody jealous that's watching, <laughs> but it is like I've never seen such a Chamber of Commerce day. The skies are so blue and it's just gorgeous. So thank you so much for joining us. More mm -hmm. important than the weather, more important than the weather, Takesha, is I would like you to tell us a little bit about yourself. I listened to your podcast, you're just fascinating and very inspiring. Tell us a little bit about your blindness and a little bit about yourself, please. All right. Well, first and foremost, I would like to thank you all for having me on the show. It's such a pleasure um, being with you all. And um, me and Renee have such an excellent rapport with one another. Uh, my name is Takesha Saffold, and I am blind. I've been blind this year now, makes 13 years. And sometimes I find it a little uncomfortable to talk about myself. So I'm going to try to give you the abbreviated version Um of myself. Um, I was I born and raised in Riviera Beach to a pretty big family. Um, my dad is the seventh out of eight kids and I have um, one sister and four brothers. Um, I became visually impaired at the age of 26. And um, of course, at that time, um, that was a young age for me. And uh, so I've had been sighted at some point and later on I became visually impaired from retina detachment. Um, like most people who go through transitioning, um, I experienced depression, which led to me eventually accepting being blind. Um, I did all of my training through the Lighthouse of the Blind, uh, where I was referred as a client through Division of Blind Services. And I am a success story through all of those things um, I've been able to overcome blindness and accept, and I consider myself as a role model and a mentor in the blind community here in Palm Beach County and also throughout the state of Florida. Um, I have served wholeheartedly 
um, formerly serving over the last six years for the National Federation of the Blind as president. Um, I have also served on our state affiliate board um, for two years. Um, I currently facilitate a support group called Justice Blind Girls, uh, which has been um, around since 1994. And it's a nonprofit to empower um, blind and visually impaired women. And since the pandemic, we have grown and there's no geographic locations currently because we are meeting by conference. Um, I provide ADA sensitivity training um, to local municipality government here mm -hmm. in Palm Beach County, as well as the transportation company. And um, <laughs> like I said, I can go on and on, but I, I do believe in the abilities of individuals who are blind and visually impaired. I believe that we have the potential to do anything that we like, such as cooking, which is one of my ways that I relax when I'm at home. Um, I'm not afraid of cooking in any capacity. And um, it is certainly something that I enjoy doing um, in various ways, rather grilling, baking, frying, uh, the list goes on. Um, currently I am working on starting a nonprofit where I want to continue the advocacy work that I have done here in Palm Beach County um, up under my own platform, some of the legislative work that I've done even in Washington, D.C. to work on various, various legislative issues. Um, and um, I have a rapport with many other people in their capacities um, and other nonprofits for the blind and visually impaired, such as the Clicking Without Looking platform. So um, my passion is to continue to, what, to do what I do as an advocate um, to continue to grow and thrive and, um, and to be empowering for many other individuals who are blind and visually impaired. So, and that's just a part of my story. Um, I am an inspiring author and I hope to have my book out in the near future. So for those who are interested in knowing more about me and some of the things that I have done um, here in Palm Beach County, I would like to share those things um, at a different time. Dakesha, uh, may I interrupt a moment and, and could your camera move a little over to the right so that we have you in the full screen? A little more, a little more, a little more. There you go. Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay. I didn't want to interrupt you. There you go. Okay. Dakesha, my goodness, that is quite a list of accomplishments. And I'm telling you, you are so inspiring. I sincerely mean that. After I heard your podcast, I went back to October 2019. You were on the Cooking Without Looking podcast. I went ahead and called our local NFB organizer, Jake, from Broward County. And yes. I'm going to get together with them on Zoom tomorrow. And that's oh. because of you. Yeah, that's because of you, because you're explaining how you live on your own. You're very independent. You let nothing stop you. You're doing some amazing things. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, yes. I'd like to get to know you better. I'd like yes. to hear more. <laughs> What's that? Yes, I would love that. Yeah, so definitely write that book, girl. You are on your way. You're yes. amazing. And speaking of being on our way, we're going to go ahead and start with your recipe. Now this is called a Watergate salad. It doesn't have any tomatoes, there's no lettuce, but it's like a sweet and scrumptious, but it also has a history. Can you yes. explain briefly the history of the salad and then we'll go ahead and have you start preparing it? Of course. Well, okay. what's interesting about this recipe is there is some history regarding the uh, pistachio mix, the jello pistachio mix, which is one of the ingredients that will be used. And that ingredient actually was established in 1976 after um, President Richard Nixon resigned after the Watergate scandal. And some of the Americans were still very upset um, from what had happened. And so that's, and I believe the recipe was called, um, it was called a pineapple delight or something to the extent because the recipe does include pineapples. But the name, the, the name Watergate was not associated with the recipe until 1993. So that is some of the history of um, the Watergate recipe because of the Watergate scandal. And I believe how um, individuals sort of broke into the Watergate building 
So <laughs> that's interesting. And I, the reason why I selected this recipe is because of the green that the pistachio mix create. And I thought that it would be cool for this time of the month since it's St. Patrick's Day. Perfect. Um, so that was my thought with that. <laughs> yeah, I like that. You're always thinking ahead, aren't you? <laughs> it's pretty cool. Okay, so go ahead and uh, start making the Watergate salad. I'm glad something good came out of that scandal. We're looking forward to it. So go ahead and get started. Just relax, enjoy, and I'll let you do your thing. Okay, awesome. Well, for those who may be blind parents, also this time of the year is spring break. It's a fun recipe that you could do with your kids and it's very inexpensive. Uh, one of the ingredients that I will be using today, um, this is the Jell-O brand pistachio mix. And I'm just gonna use one box. It's a 3.4 ounce box. Excuse me again, Takesha, if you could move a little bit or the camera, one of you guys move to the uh, right a little bit because you're right, way off. There you go. Now, oh, no, the other way, the other way. <laughs> no, to the, to the, to the right, to the right, to, to your right, to your right. A little further. There, perfect, perfect. Right there, right there. Just leave it right there. Perfect. Now we get to see you. Okay. Here we go. So what I'm going to be, um, first, I'm going to use this um, box of Jello pistachio mix, which is a 3.4 ounce box. And um, I'm just going to use this regular metal mixing bowl. And I'm just going to rip the ingredients. But before I get started, because I am a stickler of this, I'm going to wash my hands. That's always first and foremost for myself. And um, just to let, for those who out are watching, I am at home in my um, personal kitchen. So, all right, so now I'm going to open up the pistachio mix. And put it all into this bowl. I'm going to discard my contents. All right, so um, what I like to use for this particular recipe is two different types of pineapples. I like to do the crushed pineapples and the um, chunky pineapple. So you can use both or whichever type of pineapples you prefer, but these are my preferred method. And so I'm going to open one of them. And luckily these have sort of like pop tops. So I don't have to use a can opener. Yeah, love the pop tops. They're so easy. Yes. And what I'm going to do is use a colander, uh, which I have here. And I'm going to pour the uh, crushed pineapples in the colander over the sink, um, just to make sure that I don't get all of the juice because I want the consistency to be just right. Even though I'm gonna save some of it, but I don't need all of the juice. So I'm just going to um, go over to my sink and I'm just gonna pour the um, can of crushed pineapples into my colander. I'm just gonna shake it a little bit just to make sure that all of the juice and I'm gonna use some of the juice from the um, crushed pineapple. I meant the chunky, I should say. All right, so now that all of that has poured off and my bowl is right here, so I'm just going to sort of kind of pour that in there. And I'm gonna use sort of like a wide tooth type fork um, just because the uh, crushed pineapples is a little bit more stringier as uh, far as mixing purposes it could be better as far as mixing. I'm just gonna set that in the sink for now. All right, now I'm making it back to my bowl and now I'm gonna open up my other can. Again, it's, it's a pop top and I like Publix. I shop primarily at Publix for those who may know about Publix. And I like their buy one, get one free. <laughs> so you can do whatever brand of pineapples, but I use Publix. And not that they were on sale this particular week, but that's how I typically shop. So again, I'm gonna pour, and this time I'm really just going to, um, take the fork and just kind of scoop the pineapple up and I want to keep some of the juice just in case if I need it as far as the consistency. <clears throat> uh, 
right? Yeah. And I'm going to sort of pour that into my bowl. All right, and now that I have um, my pineapples and pistachio mix, I'm just gonna sort of mix it together before I mix anything else. Because one thing I found out about mixing is that it's good to mix in one thing at a time and not um, mix in too many ingredients at once because it's hard to mix them all together that way. And I learned that with baking. <laughs> with the cake is good to mix each thing in one at a time. So I'm just going to sort of mix in the um, pineapples. All right. And now I'm going to add my whipped cream, which the whipped cream was on sale at Publix. And this is a seven ounce can. Usually I use the, um, the tubs instead of the spray can, but Again, since this was on sale, I just went with it and I, it's going to do the same exact thing in terms of giving us the whipped cream that we need. We're listening for that famous sound of the whipped cream. <laughs> we yes, love yes. that sound. <laughs> I don't think you can hear it as much as I can, but that's the fun part, I think, is the the whipped cream. <laughs> your photo went away, uh, Takesha. Your, your video went away. Okay. There you go. Okay. All right. All right. Before I mix in any more of them, I'm just going to mix it a little. Okay, yeah, okay. right there, right there, it's perfect. Okay, so I'm just mixing in my whipped cream and making sure that the pineapples and the pistachio mix is all mixed in. And for me, because I can't see, one of the things that I try to feel for is to make sure that at all of the ingredients at the bottom, I'm also am sort of whipping in as well. So I'm sort of making sure that I'm getting the bottom of it really good. Cause sometimes you have some of those um, ingredients that sort of stay stuck at the bottom. So, and I think that's why I wanted to use more of this wide tooth type fork to make sure that everything is um, being mixed in. So last night, cause I know I had to make one just to to show at the end. So this was like a really good review for me. And I realized that I didn't need a whole bag of marshmallows. I just needed a half a bag of a small bag. And I use the, um, the small marshmallows instead of the big ones, but it's really a uh, personal preference depending on what size. So I'm just gonna add in, and this is just a half a bag of small, and this is Publix again. I'm going to add this in and this is I'm going to actually take this to the Braille Club this evening for their karaoke for their dessert so I was like what am I going to do with all of this dessert and so this should be pretty fun so now that I have all of those in the bowl now I'm going to mix those in and the consistency feels pretty good thus far um, you don't want it too soupy and you don't want it too thick. Um, it should be sort of like a nice creamy feel when you're mixing it all together. And then the final ingredient I'm going to use is walnuts. And I did the baking walnuts because they're already crushed. And um, depending on how, how much you like nuts, or the uh, guests that you'll be serving this to, I decided to go with a half a cup of nuts, um, which I thought that was a good enough amount for the recipe. But if you want more, you can add more. If you want less, you can add less. And um, what I use is I have these measuring um, cups that I got from my nutritionist and it's pretty cool. And I already know that this is a cup, so this has to be a half a cup. So um, I'm just going to go into my nuts and I'm just going to scoop out 
the half a cup of nuts that I need. All right, and I'm gonna pour that in or mix that in. And so far the consistency feels good where I may not need that additional pineapple juice just in case if it was too thick and I wanted to loosen it up, I would have just poured a little bit of the uh, pineapple juice from out the can into it. So once you mix it all up and you think it's all nice and mixed up pretty good, um, and whatever you want to do as far as decorating it or different things that you can do to make it look really pretty, you put it in the refrigerator to chill overnight or for a few hours. And I'm going to show the final um, dish of it. And mom, if you don't like zooming in on it a little. And this is what you would call your Watergate salad. Oh, that looks so good. What I like about it is even though it's called a salad, you might think, well, it's got a lot of greens or tomatoes, but no, it's, it's more like, like your salad. It, 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 it eats like a dessert and you got your nuts, your pistachios, and you got your walnuts, which are great omega-3. So it's healthy for you. And it's so much better than having cake or cupcakes. Not that they're not good, but this <laughs> is even better. So, oh, well, I appreciate that. It's wonderful. It's very simple. I think the yeah. whole family could join in, especially the kids can help out with that recipe. So thank you. Thank you to Keisha so much for making that for us. We love it. And uh, we look forward to seeing you again a little bit. And yes. uh, we're, we're going to move on. Do you have any other final things you'd like to say about your recipe or any? You gave us some great tips, which Sylvia will reiterate. But do you have anything else you'd like to add? Um, no, like I said, this is a, a recipe that could be used for many special occasions. Um, very simple to make. Um, and even though it may appear to be very simple, but just to have those basic cooking skills of mixing and how to mix things in um, and also measuring is very important so just to emphasize those couple of points um, that also makes this recipe um, you know not just uh, so simple as it may be <laughs> thank okay, you great thank you so much and to reiterate some of the tips that Takesha said is with us today again for um probably the third or fourth time since we've been doing this. We love Sylvia Simpson Perez. She's from the University of Mississippi. And I wanna formally introduce her because she has accolades of duties over at University of Mississippi and she is with us. So what I'd like to tell you about her is she's the project director of older individuals who are blind. blind. She's also the project director over the Technical Assistance Center of Visual Specials Program. And last but not least, she oversees the natural, National Research and Training Center on Blindness and Low Vision. Please help in welcoming Sylvia Simpson Perez with some cooking tips. Hi, Sylvia. Hi. I just want to say it's Mississippi State University in case, you know. Oh my goodness, what did I say? It's okay. And okay. Um, so to Keisha, that brought back, that, that was some serious nostalgia I was having here because I grew up having Watergate salad. That was like one of my mom's things to make. So serious nostalgia. Great tips. Um, the one thing that I wanted to say is that and we learned from a previous guest on Cooking Without Looking Quarantine Edition, and I've attended other classes that Chef Regina Mitchell does. And she taught us something that I was like so amazed by because I myself am blind and, and have been working with people who are visually impaired my whole life. And you know, we're all like a little bit nervous about touching food. And we always like, oh, well you have to use this to mix. And Regina talks about how all real chefs use their hands to mix and to check the consistency. I love your tip about one ingredient at a time to mix it so you manage it and control it, but also using your very clean hands to just touch and make sure the consistency is just right. So awesome. 
Love that. In fact, I was listening to you talk about it and I'm doing a little lunch for my family on Sunday. And I think, you know, for, for uh, St. Patty's Day, I am now going to be making Watergate salad. So awesome. Thank you. Back to you, Annette. Actually, back to you, Al. <laughs> Well, hey, Annette and Sylvia, it seems like we had our dessert before our dinner, uh, but I won't tell anyone if you won't. Hey, mom's the word. I often have my dessert before my meal. Even today, I did that because my meal wasn't ready, so I was waiting for that. I ate my black bean brownies first, so hey, whatever. To each his own, right? Uh, you're absolutely right, right Annette. So... You've got your air fryer out for us once again, and I, you're preparing zucchini spaghetti. Now, wait a minute. We just had Watergate salad, and it's not really a salad. And now we have spaghetti that's not really spaghetti? What's going on here? Okay, Alan, you're easily confused, aren't you? Don't worry, Alan. It's going to be great. It's going to... Look at these zucchinis. These are going to turn into spaghetti. And the reason I picked this is because it's very simple. It's just basically three ingredients, depending on what you want to put in it. I'm going to get started. First, you're going to cut off the ends of your zucchini. Tell me if you can hear me okay. Can you hear me all right? Mm -hmm. A little funky, uh, but, but it, it's been all right to just a sec, a few seconds ago. Okay, is it loud enough? Yes. Yeah. Okay, here's the zucchini. I know whoever can see here, I cut off the ends. And I go ahead and take the skin off these zucchinis. Now, if these were organic zucchini, I would go ahead and keep the skin on and just eat the whole thing. Why waste it all, right? If you have extra fiber. I'm really drawn to any kind of dish that says the word spaghetti in it. Because as far as calories, you can eat a lot more of the zucchini. It's very dense than you can spaghetti. And sometimes you can even mix the zucchini with actual spaghetti. So you cut back on your calories and you get your vegetables in as well. So right now I'm peeling the zucchini. And at the same time, I put two spiral zucchini in my air fryer for 20 minutes. And then I'm going to toss it around for another 20. That will be our completed dish. Right now, I just want to show you what I actually do. Okay, so I peeled all the zucchini. For those who want to look here, I left a couple pieces on, but here's two fresh zucchini. I bought these like four or five days ago, and they stay in the fridge for a long time. Fantastic. Okay, our little spiral machine. Oh, a machine, it's really a gadget. It looks like this. I got this at Bed Bath. It was only $9.99 and it works like a charm. I've talked to other cooks who say they have a, like a big con contraption, but I have, have room for all those, so I bought this little one. So if you put your bowl in front of you, okay, you stick the zucchini in the spiral gadget and you just turn, depending on if you're right-handed or left-handed, <laughs> You're gonna turn whichever hand is your dominant hand. Can you see this okay in the video? I'm sure our sighted audience can, but I'm not able to. Okay, <laughs> if whoever, whoever can see this, I'm gonna explain when I'm turning the zucchini, it comes out like spaghetti. It is so cool how it just comes out of this contraption and strips looks like homemade pasta. That's pretty cool. Yeah, and speaking of your hands, Sylvia, yes, you've got to use your hands to kind of sometimes guide it out of the spiral gadget. And I'm still turning, turning away. This gadget's only about six inches big and it's got a hole on each side and one is bigger than the other depending on how big your vegetable is. I'm assuming we could use this for other things, maybe some cucumber. I haven't tried it with anything else, but I love it for zucchini. 
Okay, what happens is when you get towards the end, you don't want to hurt your fingers trying to spiral it, turn it. So it comes with a, like, it looks like a little hat, call it like a little hat. Stick it in the end and it has prongs in it and you poke it inside the zucchini and it helps you to turn it. So your hands don't have to go close to the blade. That's a good thing. That's a real good thing. Hey, Annette, does that work with anything other than zucchini? Well, that's what I was saying. I never, never tried it with that. But I assume it would. Let's think of what I know it works with cucumber. It has to be something harder. I think it might work with carrots as well. I need to experiment because for a while I put this in the drawer and I haven't used it. And I just got it back out because I noticed I've been eating a lot of pasta lately. And I said, no, I have to go back to the zucchini because I have such a big appetite. I didn't want all those calories. But uh, let me know, Alan, why don't you try it sometime? But I will let you know as soon as I know, okay? Uh, I'll have to go down and get one of those little gadgets at Bed Bath & Beyond, you said? Bed Bath & Beyond, it's only like $9.99. And it's just okay. called a, a spy, vegetable spiral gadget. And I, now I'm on my second zucchini and I'm spiraling that one. Mm. You could do this the night before, like the batch that's in the fryer now. I spiraled it last night around midnight. <laughs> when you can't sleep, what do you do? You spiral zucchini, right? So, uh, how much does a batch make? Well, two zucchini, I would say, is enough for one or two people, depending how hungry you are. And if you're going to add anything with it, like a salad or some garlic bread or anything else you may like. I like to eat about probably one. Skip can have like two zucchini. So today we have four ready. So when he comes back from, comes home from work, he's going to be hungry. And I think he'll eat at least two. Okay, we're just about done here. It doesn't always come out perfect towards the end, but I don't worry about it. If there's a little piece left, you could either bake the part that did spiral, or you can eat it raw with some hummus or something like that. Okay, so I have more. The air fryer. Do you have to preset that and preheat it to a certain temperature? Oh, the air fryer. Yeah. Um. Well, like I told you before, I kind of I don't preheat. When I first got the air fryer, I kind of freaked out at all the buttons and everything, and I thought I had to preheat it. I had to do all this fancy stuff, and I read the book with my magnifier. I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna turn this thing on, set it for 20 minutes and it goes up to 400 degrees. So I usually do 350. And then I just put the food in. You'll, you'll kind of know when it's done because you'll smell it. Like right now I smell all the ingredients that I put in and I'm gonna explain in a minute. So my answer is um, you can preheat it if you like, but you don't have to. Okay, I don't know if anybody can see this, but this is the, <laughs> this is the finished, Spiral. Does that look like spaghetti? It, it really does. Look at that. It's exciting. It's so awesome. Okay, for this recipe, very, very simple. I got some garlic here. I have like four cloves. I buy my garlic already peeled. And then I'm just going to put it in my garlic press. You can put about two at a time in here. Now you gotta have a little bit of muscle for this. Your arms here, but it's not so bad when it's already peeled. You just squeeze the garlic press, take the knife and scrape off the bottom garlic and you put in more garlic. So like garlic out there, I don't know, I don't hear anybody cheering, but we like garlic and it makes everything better. And now with your mask on, when you go out, you don't have to worry so much about offending anybody. <laughs> when I know we're going to be around people and kissing and hugging, we don't want too much garlic. And if you love garlic, make sure your partner loves it too. Then you're both safe. Won't notice. As okay. long as you and your significant other both eat the same amount of garlic, you'll never know. Right, exactly. You got it, Alan. And Skip, you can't give him enough garlic. Like, I'll roast a whole ball for him. And he's like, you got any more? I can't taste it. I'm like, 
my birthday. Oh, I garlic too. So I put my garlic in, and you could even leave this overnight. The garlic will kind of marry with the other flavors and make it transported to a different level. Just kind of toss it around like so. Very simple. That's about it. One more thing we're going to do to this. I don't use oil like right out of the, the bottle, like, you know, liquid. I use like a spray a little bit. This helps it to cook better, in my opinion, and especially with an, an Italian dish. Got a little bit of avocado oil here, which is heat resistant. Just a little couple of sprays. Now, as avocado I leave this, oil? I'm sorry? You said avocado oil? Yeah, avocado oil is good, or yeah, probably avocado. When you use olive oil, it's best to use it at the end kind of drizzle a little bit on because olive oil is not as heat resistant as avocado and it, it damages the, they say the chemical structure if you heat it, but avocado oil take the heat without damaging the structure. So you make sure to get the nutritional benefits of it, of the omega-3 oils. Okay, you know, let's see here. Let me show you what I cooked here. This is another finished product. This is the spaghetti squash, I mean, um, spaghetti zucchini, excuse me, that's been in the fryer for about 20 minutes. Let's see, that. I'm going to take it out and put it in the dish to present it. This is my dish, and if anybody could see it, it says pasta on it. When I saw this, I had to get this dish because we love pasta. You just fill it up with the zucchini pasta and or regular spaghetti. You can mix it together. It makes a nice presentation. Go ahead and put your skinny pasta. You take some tongs and you take it out of the air fryer. Oh, it's just so you know too, before I forget, the air fryer I lined with parchment paper is your friend for the air fryer because it keeps everything self-contained and it keeps the air fryer cleaner. Otherwise, the spaghetti squash would go through the holes of the basket and I don't think that would be too wise. It would get very dry. Okay, now what we're gonna do, I want you guys to be able to see this. I'm going to place some sauce. Drizzle the spaghetti sauce. This could be, of course, jarred sauce. This is homemade, because I don't like a lot of sugar in the sauce. So I can show that in another recipe, but I simply took two cans of crushed tomatoes and I sauteed some roasted garlic first and added two carrots for sweetness instead of sugar. And then I cooked my sauce for maybe 20 minutes. That was it. And I, I have like two big jars of sauce. Okay, we put the spaghetti sauce on top. And we're gonna put some Parmesan cheese on top. Remember now this, Zucchini has a lot of garlic in it already. So you could add salt and pepper if you like. You can add Parmesan cheese. You can add more garlic powdered or even cut up crushed, more crushed garlic. Then for a touch of presentation, what I like to do is either drizzle the pasta with a little olive oil for those that like it. And I spray the edge of the dish with a little olive, olive no, that's a little olive, excuse me, but it could be olive. What I like to do is drizzle some basil. It could be fresh, it could be regular. And when you oil the dish, the basil is going to stick on the edges. So it looks pretty. Of course, it probably be a lot more in here, but this right here is the finished product and I'm gonna try it. I don't know whoever can see out there. You got your zucchini pasta with your sauce and your Parmesan cheese drizzled with basil. Okay, this is the moment of truth. I can't wait to shovel this in my mouth. These flavors are going to jump out at you. Oh, oh my goodness. I'm going to make a pig of my, oh, that's pretty long. Okay, let's twirl it up just like regular pasta. My mouth is watering the flavors of the garlic. 
the cheese, the basil. Keep twirling, I'm twirling. Ready, that, set. That actually looks really good. But I'm you're a vegetarian, but I'm a carnivore. And as a carnivore, am I allowed to use meat sauce with that? Are you allowed to what, Alan? Are you, am I allowed to use meat sauce with zucchini spaghetti? Oh my gosh, of course you are. Oh. You can do whatever you want. It's so, a yeah. Yeah, add your meat do sauce. Do you have any tips or thoughts about Annette's recipe? Well, I, l listen, y'all can't hear it, but my stomach is growling about as loud as I think you could hear because I'm like, my mouth is just watering, Annette. You're killing us. You're killing us, girl. Um, I also love to use zucchini to make pasta. And um, it, is, it is actually, to me, way more tasty than regular pasta. It's just delicious. And I, I love your tip about putting the, the basil and spraying it to hold it down for that, to make it look beautiful. Love that. And the other thing, the only thing I would just say that you, you pointed out and you often talk about is how parchment paper is our friend. And parchment paper is really just, you can, it has so many purposes. And um, when we talk about using it to keep things clean, like I, I don't think I bake very many things. There are some things you can't bake in the oven and use parchment paper, but they're few and far between because it really does make a big difference. So thank you. And um, oh my gosh, I, now I'm ready for dinner. <laughs> Well, listen, Sylvia, <laughs> Sylvia, now that I know that you like this, if you ever come to Florida, you better let me know because I'm going to make this for you, okay? Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you, that Sylvia. Really does, that really does sound wonderful, Annette. Um, so now, could we open it up to our live virtual audience? Does anyone have any questions or comments for Annette? Sylvia, uh, Takesha, I think you're still there somewhere. My yes, I am. Takesha, I got a quick question for you. What time's karaoke start at the Braille Club tonight? Karaoke at the Braille Club is from five to nine. Okay. Yes, okay. And, and it's it's also over the conference line as well. Okay. Well, I want to come down and maybe try some of your uh, some of your wonderful Watergate salad. Okay, I'll be there. <laughs> I got to get a ride. <laughs> <laughs> we all know hot problems, those of us who can't see too well, don't we? <laughs> How about some other questions from our audience? Hi, everybody. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Hi. Uh, <clears throat> my name is Marvin. I was invited to this meeting by Renee. Um, I'm... I'm um, down here in deep south in Texas, and I just wanted to comment on, is it Takesha? Is that your uh, name? Yes, Mr. Marvin. I know we've been on many platforms before. <laughs> okay, I knew I recognized that. Florida, that's right, that's right. Well, listen, I, I was first introduced to Watergate salad when I was a little boy, and um, I tried to make it since I've been blind. And I screwed it all up, but I did get some some nice uh, tips on getting it right because what I, I what I found was it just didn't have a good consistency at all. But um, my only ingredients that I did use were just the, the Jello packet and the, um, the 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 whip the whipped cream. But I, I learned some good things from uh, from your presentation. Um, and the only other comment I like to make is that uh, Miss Sylvia, we we sure thank you for being from Mississippi State because uh, our quarterback, Dak Prescott for the Dallas Cowboys just signed a big deal and that's his alma mater. So we're glad to, that you guys sent him over to Texas. So that's all I had to say, guys. I love I love the, the presentation. Um, keep it up. Thank you so much, Marvin. Uh, do we have someone else out there with a question? Uh, Renee, are we, uh, are we we getting questions fielded there? Well, I don't see any questions over here. Um, somebody asked me, um, last week I was uh, speaking to the group at uh, Green Bay 
National Federation of the Blind, the Brown County version in Green Bay. I'm from Green Bay. So it was like going home virtually. Uh, somebody asked me about the um, Insta, what is it, the uh, Instapot? Do any of you guys use Instapot? No. No, no I don't use it. I'm, I'm dying to try. I, I hear a lot of good things. There's a chef on YouTube, Chef AJ, who swears by it. It's very fast and very safe and easy to use, but I haven't tried it yet. Okay. I have I have used one. Um, yes, yes, I have used one, and it is everything that is advertised to be. Uh, my wife and I, she's made she's made ribs in that instant pot in I think uh, sixteen minutes. Sixteen no, I, minutes. Yeah. Uh, I think I okay. think she asked me. The lady asked me. Like, how do you know how much time it is? Do you do you put the like the high marks on it or something? Well, no, I think the the one that we have is digital. So I, I I've used help uh, with the app. I think it's um be my eyes when I was here by myself, or I get my wife and kids. But it's really simple. I think it's a there's a manual button and an automatic button, and then a couple of pluses and minuses for bringing up your uh, your cook time and uh, start button. But that, but it really is a nice gadget to have. It really is. My wife can cook a pot of beans from 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 dry beans from the package in about uh, thirty or forty minutes. Wow. Um, so mm -hmm. yeah, so so it is really really good. I've done chicken in it. Um, you can do whatever you want in it. Really, I've, I've softened up a brisket in there. So it, it's it's you can do a lot of good stuff in it. That sounds really good. Say, I'd like to point out something that Takesha said uh, early in her presentation when she said she was at home in her own kitchen. Um, I myself am in my own kitchen. Annette, I know you're in your own yeah. kitchen. If you know your kitchen well, it makes cooking a whole it lot easier, does. doesn't yes. it? It surely does, yes. It does. I think the trick is that if you have lost your vision recently, just to be familiar with your kitchen. Put your hands on everything. Know exactly where everything is. It'll help you out when you're cooking. All right, so I know you're there somewhere. <laughs> well, I think we've probably come to the end of the show, so. Well, then uh, it has been another fun, enlightening cooking without looking TV show, Quarantine Cuisine Edition, powered by Zoom. You can find today's recipe on our website, that is www.cookingwithoutlookingtv.wordpress.com. If you enjoyed what you saw, click on our Vision World Foundation donation link at the top of our website. You can listen to our Cooking Without Looking podcast on iTunes, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pandora, Overcast, which I'm not familiar with, or anywhere you listen to your favorite podcasts. Annette? Sounds good, Ellen. We're excited today. We're always surprises here at Quarantine Cuisine, and we'll just keep doing this until they allow us to meet again. We're doing good with our masks, and hopefully soon in Florida, everybody will be vaccinated and we can get back together. Thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you. Bye. Bye everyone. Thank Bye, you everyone. so much. Hey, are we going to have our eating without seeing session now? <laughs> <laughs> See you next time. Bye-bye.